This is KGW News at Sunrise. He hasn't gave me any reason to, you know, to, to believe he has any like remorse for what he did because he didn't turn himself in. That mom talking about the street racer accused of a hit and run that killed her daughter. She wants justice, and now lawmakers in Salem want to make sure people involved in street racing face tougher consequences. We'll have a look at the new bill in the legislature. And Mount Hood Meadows is expected to reopen this morning after a strong wind shut it down. We'll take a peek at the current conditions and look at the passes if you're heading that way. And we are also hanging out this morning at a classic restaurant in Beaverton, an old favorite, one of the oldest restaurants in the Beaverton area. As a matter of fact, we're talking about Tom's Pancake House. I've been there. Of I course you have. Yes. A lot of people have, Rod. Well, yes. You know how long they've been around, Mr. Rodney? Quite a while. 1966. Yeah, to not be as exact. long as me. Wow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Today is also Fat Tuesday, by the way, so a lot of people associate Fat Tuesday with pancakes. Got to use up all the eggs. Got to, oh, Brenda, that's how it all started. You don't know, you're looking at me like I'm crazy. I've never heard that. Really? I lived in Louisiana. <laughs> Wait a minute. Fat Tuesday before I Ash Wednesday? Yes. People cleared out yeah. the fridge, the milk, the eggs, the, the sugar, butter, the butter, all, the, all yeah, that stuff. That. They made the pancakes before they had to get I fasting. did not know that. <laughs> I just want you to know. But the look she gave me as I was saying that behind all the video was like this. Cakes. <laughs> What are you talking about? I had Just no the idea. Truth. I love that. Hey, good morning, everybody. Before we get to all the Fat Tuesday fun, you've got a little yes. forecast for us. We go to Rod Hill, who's a <laughs> visual of Fat Tuesday, Stop it. by the way. All right, we have uh, heavy snow up in the mountains. We'll look at past cameras coming up shortly, but they are already snow and icy up in the high country. Also picking up snow now over the higher elevations of the coast range. This will turn into a sunbreak scattered heavy shower day. I expect some spotty downpours and some hail, but outside of the mountains, it will be liquid rain today. Right now we're at 44 and guess what? The temperature doesn't do anything at all today. I kind of have us holding in the low to mid 40s all day long. Heavy showers, hail possibilities. There is a chilly west northwest wind bouncing to about 25 miles per hour right now. Back to you. OK, thank you, Rod. Oregon lawmakers are talking about a new bill that would increase consequences for street racers. It's currently in committee with no hearings scheduled yet. But Catherine Cook spoke with one mom who is still waiting to get justice for her daughter who died. Fiery wreckage burning on North Marine Drive. It marks the spot where two cars crashed late Saturday night. Police say street racing was involved. Three people went to the hospital. One of them died. Police say that driver was part of the event. This marks the sixth traffic-related death of this year and just the latest involving illegal street racing in Portland. Last August, 26-year-old Ashley McGill was killed while waiting for a bus. She was standing at Northeast 133rd and Stark when police say a street racer lost control and hit her. The driver took off. For months, Ashley's mom waited for justice. Trying to, you know, find out whatever I could find out and not finding out too much. Then on Thursday, police arrested 35 year old Kenneth Freeman for second degree manslaughter. She had a family and uh, that, you know, that was my baby. He hasn't she gave me any reason to, you know, to, to believe he has any like it remorse for what he did because he didn't turn himself in. But um, I don't, you know, I don't hate him. I, I, I pray for him, but um, I don't I don't hate him. Many street races and takeovers are organized by individuals and advertised on social media. In Salem, lawmakers are considering a new bill designed to make laws tougher on those who organize street races and takeover events. If Senate Bill 615 passes, first offenders could get a maximum of 364 days in prison and or a $6,200 fine. Repeat offenders within a five-year period could face up to five years in prison and or a $125,000 fine. The bill would also modify the charge of reckless driving to include speed racing activities. Something, anything to try and bring an end to scenes like this. Catherine Cook, KGW News. In other news this morning, the family of a man killed in Northeast Portland almost two years ago is still hoping for a break in his case. So it was two years ago when 25 year old Tyler Turpin was found shot to death near Northeast 45th or part of me, 54th and Fremont. The family is asking anyone who knows what happened to contact Crime Stoppers. Crime Stoppers, by the way, is offering a $2,500 reward and also wants to remind people that they can remain anonymous when they give information. 
An independent review of a deadly police shooting found significant missteps by both the officers involved and the detectives who investigated the case. Back in 2021, Tigard police shot and killed Jacob McDuff. His family says he was having a mental health crisis and police didn't seem to notice. He was hiding in his pickup truck. As this recreation shows, the officers surrounded the truck and one of them shot beanbag rounds. Another officer then shot five rounds of bullets, waited 18 seconds, then fired more shots. Not once did the police during their investigation consider that maybe Jacob did was in a, in a mental health crisis. It, it didn't even cross their minds. A grand jury cleared the officers of any criminal wrongdoing in September of 2021. But lawyers for the McDuff family say the Washington County Major Crimes Team botched this investigation from the very start. And they allege the officers involved may have talked to each other to get their stories straight. The legal team is now asking for the U.S. Department of Justice to investigate. And we've got a live look at Mount Hood this morning from our Timberline Lodge Skycam. And actually, we have video from <laughs> fire and director just told Doesn't me this is yet. the video. It is not <laughs> quite that bright this morning, but strong gusts did close down Mount Hood Meadows yesterday. So we checked this morning and Meadows is expected still to open up today. That was the latest from their website. KGW's Joe Ranieri also went to the mountain yesterday to talk about the big storm that's going to hit the Cascades starting later today. On Monday, Mount Hood Meadows had to close their lifts because of the high winds. In fact, they had to do it again late Sunday afternoon, and there's a slight chance they're going to be doing it later today as well as this strong front moves on shore. The conditions were almost picture perfect at Mount Hood Meadows for President's Day on Monday, but the high winds forced the ski resort to close for the day. Everything looks really good, but I guess they couldn't run the lifts today because it was super windy, but um, so we decided to come down here. That meant the summit ski area in government camp was packed with people who decided to trade their skis and snowboards in for sledding gear. Yeah, and snow tubing we've never done before. So we were, yeah, we're getting ready to give it a shot. Most of Monday brought cold rain showers for the mountains, but over the next couple of days, a strong front is expected to bring heavy snow and breezy conditions Monday night through Wednesday. What we see is there could be two to three feet of snow here through Wednesday or Thursday, and we're going to have a lot of recovery to do afterwards because it's coming in with some pretty intense winds. It's not gonna be just the Cascades that see the heavy snow, so will the coast range. Don Hamilton with ODOT says he's paying close attention to all of the highways this week across the state. We've got the de-icer going as needed up there, and we've got the plows ready, we got the sanders ready, we got the salt trucks ready to go as we need them when uh, conditions warrant. There's even a chance we see snow levels drop much lower later in the week. As the week goes on, our ODOT crews are going to be watching conditions very, very carefully everywhere, especially here at the valley floor. And so far this winter, snow down on the valley floor has been minimal at best. We're going to be watching out. We haven't exhausted our supply of our resources, our winter resources yet, the salt, the sand, the de-icer. We still have plenty of them on board right now, too. So we'll have to see if this storm... The rest of February looks pretty fierce. Cold temperatures lots of moisture so I, I think we're going to end up February with a lot of snow. Is the storm many of us have been waiting for. Now I spoke with Don Hamilton with ODOT who told me if things get really nasty throughout parts of the coast range, the Cascades or potentially down to the valley floor, he will have his crews work 12 hour shifts. But again, that remains to be seen. For KGW Sunrise, I'm Joe Ranieri. Okay, Rod, tell us about the wind up there this morning. So I just checked. Remember this front that came in before midnight last night, or actually about midnight on Mount Hood, came in with a jet core, and I thought there might be 100 mile per hour winds at 7,000 feet, but looks like the those winds were about 75 last night, mm. still blowing on the upper lifts at Meadows to 52 miles per hour right now. Um, so wind's going to be a factor up there again today. Bundle up. Winter storm warnings in place uh, all the way into Wednesday morning for both the Cascades and the Coast Range. Here's the wind map. These are current wind gusts right now to 46 in Pendleton, 28 in Bend, 26 in the Dalles, 28 in Astoria, 40 in John Day. So really much of the state seeing noticeable winds. There are warnings in play for parts of the Columbia, well, much of the Columbia Basin basically, <laughs> this red area. 
uh, back up into Wasco County and then advisories for wind in Central Oregon, parts of Jefferson and Deschutes County. These will all expire later this morning. These were up for potential winds of 50 to 60 miles per hour. Haven't seen reports that the winds went that high. Anyway, those will be expiring in the coming hours. The purple color is the winter storm warnings for the Cascades and the Coast Range. We are now in. We talked about this yesterday. This front basically opened the door to an active scattered shower pattern. And today, outside of the mountains, it will be rain showers here on the west side for the most part. Radar is picking up some colder pockets already. We're showing some snow over some of the high hills. But I think sticking snow today, you're going to have to be near to even a, just above 1,000 feet to find that on the ground. Here's that government camp ODOT camera. 28 degrees there and already pretty snow and ice covered. Snow is just starting to really stack up and get going. Now down to 34 degrees on the Sunset Highway over the coast range of 1400 feet. That will become snow covered in the coming hours. The snow levels again drop to just about 1000 feet today. Early morning numbers. Uh, I like this 43 Baker City, 43 Salem, 43 Newport. Hey, we're all the same. Here's a look at uh, our future cast movie real quick, showing the scattered power pattern with some breaks and see the bright colors, the yellows. There will be some spotty downpours and some hail. Remember once the uh, uh, cumulus clouds start to build, they'll reach freezing temperatures quickly and that will freeze some little rain droplets into hailstones. So we'll get that. Here we are this evening. Scattered power pattern continuing. I want to say powder instead of pattern for some reason. <laughs> Here we are tomorrow morning, and there is mostly snow showers in the air for your Wednesday for Portland. 40 to 45 today. We'll only be in the 30s tomorrow. We start the chance of some dustings of snow on the ground at lowest elevations tomorrow into tomorrow night. Looks like the moisture quickly dries up Thursday morning, and then we just go all dry until I think it's rain, but it'll be a close call Saturday overnight into Sunday. That's your forecast for now. All right. Thank you, sir.